Thank you. So thank you very much for uh, the invitation and the organization of this uh, nice workshop. Um, so um, I'll tell you about a um, uh, uh, famous process in the, in the field of random matrix theory, which is called the sine beta process. And uh, I'll try to show you um, a, a, an approach which is fairly different from the way it was defined. Um, so um, the main part of uh, what I will tell, uh, talk about today is, about, uh, is from a joint work with David de Rudre, uh, Adrien Hardy and Thomas Leblay, uh, which is a, it was already a few years ago, but you'll see that there are also uh, newer things uh, related to this work. So um, as it is the first uh, talk in this workshop, of the random matrix uh, theory. <laughs> I will spend a while um, introducing the process. You may not be familiar with uh, this sign process or sign beta process. So I'll, uh, I'll take time to introduce it. And then I'll um, state our main results, which is uh, a description of sign beta through uh, what is called DLR equation. And um, roughly speaking, it means that we going to define um, the, the sine beta as an infinite volume Gibbs, uh, Gibbs measure. OK, this is the, the rough idea. Um, then, then I'll uh, describe a few applications of these DLA equations. Um, so in the paper with uh, David, Adrien and Thomas, we um, applied this DLA equation um, to get a, a property of, for the sine beta which is called number rigidity, so I'll tell you about that. I'll also report about um, an application for, to um, fl the study of fluctuation for linear statistics, that one made by, uh, by Thomas Leblay. Um, so I'll be quick on these applications. Um, and I want to emphasize a third, more recent applications uh, to uh, the study of uh, Dyson, Brown, and motion with an infinite number of particles. And I chose to do that because you'll see that uh, several uh, Japanese colleagues were involved in the study of this uh, object. So I, that's why I choose here to uh, emphasize, emphasize on these applications. OK, well, so what is, uh, what is sine beta? Um, so we start with what we call uh, a log gas. So uh, it can be on the real line or on the unit circle. So I'll, I'll look at one dimensional uh, uh, particle systems. Uh, but there are not like we saw a lot of discrete models. Here it's a model on the line. So I, I have n particles living on, on R. And for uh, such a configuration, I uh, associate an energy which is of this form. So you have a pairwise logarithmic interaction. Um, so it's, a, it's repulsive, like uh, particles don't like to be uh, too close to each other. Um, so if uh, I, have, I am on the unit circle or on a compact subset, I could look uh, only at this energy. But if I am in, on the real line, I need, in fact, to confine the, uh, the, um, uh, the particles, uh, I don't want them to uh, run away to infinity. So a V will um, uh, play the role of a confining po potential. Okay? And then uh, from this energy, I can define uh, the associated Gibbs measure. So I, um, if I have a, an inverse temperature beta, um, I associate so uh, 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 probability, a density of probability to the, to the configuration proportional to exponential minus beta over 2 times the energy of the configuration. Okay? So you can think if you are in high temperature, so beta uh, equals 0, you have uh, essentially independent particles. And if uh, beta, is, so if you, if you are at low temperature, so beta is large, uh, you will be, you will charge configuration at all close to the minimizer or the maximizers of the, of HN. Uh, okay, so um, this logarithmic, um, uh, this log 
uh, repulsion in, uh, in dimension one may uh, look not very natural. So the log interaction would be more, more natural in dimension two because it's just the electrostatic uh, repulsion and it's also, also the, of course, the fundamental solution of the of the uh, heat equation, um, of the, sorry, of just the Poisson equation, sorry. Um, but uh, it's, it's natural in the sense that it's associated to a very uh, popular and very uh, basic uh, random matrix uh, ensembles. So um, if I choose uh, the inverse temperature, for, so the parameter beta to be equal to two, then I have like special systems um, and in particular, for uh, a quadratic potential on the real line, if I compute, in fact, this, uh, this Gibbs measure is also the joint law of the eigenvalues of um, a random matrix chosen uh, from the celebrated GUE, which is probably the most common ensembles of, uh, uh, of random matrix. Um, and also, uh, on if you are on the uni unit circle and you just take v equals to zero, then you have a joint law of the CU of the eigenvalues of the CUE that is just choosing uh, a rotation uni uniformly. So take the R measure on the unitary group, and you, the eigenvalues are distributed according to this measure with beta equals two and no potential. Okay, so it's, it's natural in this sense. Um, okay, and I can also mention that for general beta, um, so in the, for the same potential I, uh, I mentioned, uh, we also know uh, like matrix models that are uh, maybe a little bit uh, less uh, natural, but uh, that are still uh, easy to describe, so here, for a uh, quadratic potential, I have an analog of the uh, GUE, which is called, which is the G beta E for <laughs> obvious reason. Um, and uh, it was described by Dumitri and Edelman, and you can describe it as a tri diagonal model. So you have Gaussian entries on the diagonal and chi entries with varying parameters above and uh, just above the diagonal and uh, below the diagonal. And same thing for uh, the um, circular ensembles. You have an analog, uh, which is <laughs> even more, a bit more involved because it's pentadiagonal. And you can describe also the law of the entries. Okay, and for general V, okay, you have a, sy a particle system, not necessarily a, a very natural uh, random matrix model associated, but it's still a, a valuable. Uh, particle system to study. So let's now look a little bit how uh, the, the microscopic behavior of this, um, of, of this particle. So let's start with uh, uh, the CUE, which is much maybe easier to study. So um, you have a unit circle and you have, say you imagine many particles N particles um, on the on the on the unit circle, and uh, n will go to infinity. And you want to understand um, how it behaves. So, um, if you look at the low large number, say, um, so the look at the empirical measure, it will just converge to the uniform measure on the unit circle, this is easy. But what you want to, um, what you want to, um, to look at is just, um, so you will scale, so you will um, zoom on the configuration, okay, to make it, so of course, if you, when you will zoom on a, on a piece of the circle, it will just, you will look at something looking like R, and you will zoom on a scale so that there are, uh, in average, one particle by unit of, of, uh, of uh, unit length, okay? So, um, and so what, so I will, I will see a random process like that. 
And can I describe this limiting process? And the answer is yes. Um, and the reason why is pretty easy to describe is the fact that in the particular case when beta <coughs> equals to 2, um, well, if you look at your particle, so you see that this, uh, this, uh, this interaction, okay, this law, is, um, is uh, invariant by permutation. Okay? So you can look at it, you can look at this Gibbs measure okay, as a measure on subsets of particles for getting the, 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 the numbering of the particles. Okay? So this is called a point process. Okay? If you have a, a probability measure on the set of locally finite configuration of points, this is a point process. Um, and uh, when beta equals 2, the corresponding point processes are what we call determinantal. It means that their, their correlation functions have a very special structure um, the, the kth uh, correlation function can be expressed as the determinant okay, of uh, kvn of x1, xj, which is, so you have a kernel, okay, kv, that uh, gives you all the correlation functions. So only one uh, function with uh, two variables gives you all the correlation functions. So, so this is a, a very special structure that uh, happens only in the case beta, beta equals 2. And in the case of the CUE, it's very easy to compute. So yes. for, for any choice of the confining potential, the, uh, you want yeah. the key, key yeah. Known, yeah. Uh, known? Yeah, uh, known depends what you, you mean by known, but you can express it in terms of the orthogonal polynomials associated with some measure of uh, the measure with density exponential minus v. So it may be more or less explicit. Okay, but it's always a determinant. Uh, yeah, it's always determinant when beta equals 2. But in the case, so on the unit circle when v equals 0, <laughs> uh, it's, it's very uh, easy to compute the kernel. Okay, it's sine n over 2 theta minus theta prime over sine theta prime theta minus theta prime, theta prime over 2. And um, so I, here I expressed it in terms of the eigenangles, OK? But you can see it on the unit circle just replacing theta by exponential i theta. OK, and then when I zoom, so when I rescale to get uh, a configuration with one particle in average by unit of time, uh, it's easy to see to see how the kernel transforms, you just uh, make a simple transformation of the kernel. And it's, of course, very easy to see that this converges to a limiting kernel, which is uh, sine theta minus theta prime over theta minus theta prime. And the sine process, so I should write the sine 2 process, is the determinantal process with this kernel. So it's easy, it's, I mean, it's well defined and pretty easy to, um, to, um, to describe. And what is remarkable is that uh, it's, uh, it's very universal. I mean, uh, for very general V, you will have the same limiting process. Okay? Um, and so now, if uh, I go to general beta, then much less in, is known. Okay, um, it's, uh, it's very, uh, uh, I mean, much less is known. I mean, the limiting process is, is harder to describe. So the story starts with Falco and Virag um, around 2009. Um, so they show that if you look at the G beta E, so beta, beta, any beta positive and quadratic potential. Um, and you zoom, so you have a process on the line, you zoom uh, on the right scale. Um, well, you, you see, what you see is some limiting process. 
Kilip and then Shu did the same for C beta. And Nakano showed that, in fact, the both limiting processes were the same. And the way they were described, it was not obvious, but it was the same process. And this is, this is sine beta. OK, so this is the, the process we are interested in. So one way to describe the sine beta is through a coupled family of stochastic differential equation. So in the following sense, um, so just to give a general idea, if you want to know the number of points of sine beta in some interval, zero lambda, well, you look at this equation, d alpha, so alpha lambda will solve a stochastic differential equation. And uh, you can, they show, so Valko and Virag show that the limit of alpha lambda um, when, uh, when t goes to infinity is equal to 2 pi times an integer. Okay, it's a bit of a miracle, so it's called the Brown and Carousel. And uh, this integer is the number of points of sine beta. And it's coupled in the sense that for all lambda, you use your random input is the same, uh, same two-dimensional Brownian motion. OK, so it's, it's pretty involved. It's a complicated description. Um, then later on, they could also describe sine beta as the spectrum of some random operators that are not easy <laughs> uh, neither to describe. I won't uh, go too much into the details. Uh, and again, we have uh, universality results. OK, so when we start this project, we were here uh, with a description of sine beta. Is it OK so far? All yes. All uh, no, no, there are universality, OK? So same thing as in the beta equals 2 um, thing. So after the description of Valko and Virag and Kilip and Nenshu, uh, other uh, people show that under very quite general assumptions on V. Uh, Generally, the V go to infinity. No, the V. Because in order to be confining Potential. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be confi confining. OK. So you have some assumptions on V, like regularity assumption, etc. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure I would be able to give you like the up-to-date uh, up, uh, assumptions on the V. Uh, but there are pretty general results um, about uh, so universality with respect to V. Is it OK with the description of sine beta? So when we started this, this project, we said, OK, but I mean, we are starting from a Gibbs measure and making, letting n goes to infinity. So it should be possible to describe the sine beta as an infinite volume Gibbs measure in the sense of uh, statistical mechanics. OK, and this is what we tried to do. This was our motivation for this work. Um, OK, so ca can we make sense of this limit? And uh, it happens that the tools, the good, the, a nice tool to, to give, um, to make sense of, uh, of what it means, it's what is called a DLR equation, so dobruchin landford real equation. And um, so it means that um, you will describe your Gibbs measure by giving, so you have your, uh, say we are on R, you fix, say, a compact set lambda, and you want to describe, so imagine you have an infinite, so a, a, a configuration of your process, okay, so this is gamma, and um, imagine that I hide what happens inside lambda, OK? And I want to describe the uh, law of the conditional law of, the, of uh, the, the process inside lambda 
giving the outside, okay, the, this is in general the Euler equation, and canonical means that we also keep the information of how many points they are inside lambda. Okay, so I say, okay, I have a configuration where I, there are here five points inside. Um, I erase these points and I just keep the information that they were five points. Okay, can I redraw? <laughs> Uh, 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 can I redraw a, a, a configuration inside, okay, so that I keep the, the same law, okay, so can I define the configuration inside lambda, knowing the exterior configuration and the number of points, okay, and it's a, it's a, it's a, say, usual way of uh, describing in finite volume Gibbs measure in, in statistical mechanics. Okay, so I denote it, so d sine beta of eta, knowing the configuration outside and the number of points. So gamma lambda is gamma restricted to lambda. Okay, so this is restricted, restriction to lambda. And this is the number of points inside lambda. Okay, and so we could describe this uh, conditional law, so up to a normalizing constant, uh, it's described as follows. So you, so the Bernoulli process means that you will express the density with respect to the process that just draws so this Bernoulli process just draws independent uh, points. Uh, so a number of, of uh, gamma lambda, say gam this is equal to k. So you will have k points inside lambda independently. And the interaction, so you can describe the con conditional density as follows. So the exponential minus beta, you have the self-interaction, so this is uh, so I, I'll show you, this, this is the interaction, so this is sum of minus log of xi minus xj, but only for the points inside lambda. And this is what we call the move function, and this describes the interaction, uh, the potential created by the configuration outside on a point inside. Okay, so what we can say is that as the self-interaction is was of the same form, in fact, the sine beta is again a beta ensemble, it's again a, a, a log gas with a beta parameter, with the same beta parameter, but with a distorted potential. Okay, so let me just reformulate and redraw, uh, re rewrite this, uh, this DLR equation uh, a little bit differently. It's the same, but a, a little bit more explicit. So what this means is that if you want to compute the expectation of how, say, bounded measurable function with respect to sine beta, uh, you draw the configuration outside. This is gamma lambda complement. And to draw the points inside, you will use this conditional density, this density, and this density is just, okay, a beta ensembles inside times sum of the potential applied to xi created by gamma lambda. It's just another way, maybe easier, I mean, I don't know which one you, you prefer, to uh, rewrite this, the same thing. Oh, sorry, I went a bit too fast. So, um, yeah, I should mention that uh, previous results of this kind uh, um, uh, existed in the case beta equals 2, so in the determinantal case due to um, Sasha Bufetov. There also work a work with of Keulers and uh, Minya Diaz of the same, in the same spirit. Um, but with very different techniques, really relying on the determinant or um, 
uh, structure. Um, okay, so how we, so just a, a, a word on the proof. So the idea is to start with a refer, oh, sorry. Ooh. No, <laughs> sorry, I, I wanted, uh, I'm sorry, okay. I wanted to uh, use the pointer, sorry. So I used, um, so we use a, a C beta, so we show a DLR equation in finite volume for uh, reference models that we know converges to the limit. So we, we, we will have here uh, a finite volume version and we want to go to the limit, use convergence. And what is uh, very subtle and, 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 and technical is to show that this, so you say that the logarithm is a long range interaction, okay? So of course it's not summable, etc. So the, 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 the fact that we can define um, the interaction, the potential created that the all infinite configuration on one point comes from very subtle cancellations from the outside. And it's, it's, it comes from the fact that we know um, we have like discrepancy estimates on sine beta that came from previous work of Leblay and Serfati and that in fact the configuration outside is well spread and so you have a, a, a good balance between points like uh, drawing from one side <laughs> and drawing from the other side. Okay, so this, uh, this is uh, the, say the technical part. Okay, so now uh, I will go to the application. So as I told you, I will be quick on the first, uh, the first ones. So from uh, our DLR equation, right after our work, Thomas could um, show, so could study um, fluctuations for uh, linear statistics. So you see, so here gamma is just the configuration. So integral of phi, phi of x gamma is just the linear statistics, so I can re redraw, re rewrite it as sum of phi of x, xi for uh, xi uh, in, the, in the configuration. Okay, and um, as, I, as I said, um, we, we zoomed, okay, so that, uh, so that uh, we have one particle per unit of volume in average. So um, say the, 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 the expectation, I mean, we have, if, you want, if we want to look at the fluctuation, we have just to compare to the Lebesgue measure, okay? Because the average behavior, we are in, on, on the right scale, so that the average is the, is the Lebesgue measure. Okay, so I, we look at the, what is called fluctuation for linear statistics. And um, so, uh, and uh, again, we scale on the, on, the, on, the, on the right scale. And we have, um, we have, um, uh, so Thomas got a result which is very typical in random matrix theory. So in fact, in the limiting, so we have uh, asymptotic normality and the variance involves the h one half norm of the test function, and this this appears this appeared already in many results in random matrix theory for uh, in the in the in this in this context. Okay, and just what I wanted to emphasize, I won't insist because time is <laughs> is uh, is going fast, but um. Uh, what uh, what I uh, I wanted to um, just to emphasize is that uh, the starting point of the technique is DLR equation. Okay, because to study uh, fluctuation, so to establish a CLT, uh, a standard starting point is to uh, to study the Fourier transform of the Lap or the Laplace transform of the quantity you want to study. Okay, so this is what is what is made here. You look at the Laplace transform or of the uh, so of the, these fluctuations. 
So the quantity I introduced here, okay? And uh, so first we, we uh, so Thomas choose a, a good event on which the, this quantity is, is bounded, okay? And which this good event has large probability. And so, um, so studying this, this Laplace transform, so the starting point is to apply DLR equation. So this is exactly our DLR equation with f here, which is the, uh, the, the exponential of t times fluct. Okay, so I apply it and I have exactly what, uh, what the other equation says. So here I have, so my function is applied to the configuration inside uh, union the outside. Okay, here the conditional density is uh, written okay, on, on, uh, on this form here. And the key point is that if you apply DLR on a compact set containing the support of your test function, okay, because phi is compactly supported. So if you have this, in fact, this quantity does not depend on the outside. And so you can see this quantity just as a perturbation of the self-interaction. Okay, this is, this is the, the key point. <laughs> and so here, in fact, what you have is just uh, a normalizing constant. It's a new uh, z, <laughs> okay? Uh, but with uh, a slightly different interaction. And then the whole machinery is to compare the, uh, the, um, the normalizing constant uh, with the initial interaction and the normalizing constant with the new one. And then there's a lot of work, but it's just to explain that DLR uh, equation um, is used like to, to start the, the process. Okay, so... Um, one of our motivation also for uh, the work with, uh, with David, uh, Adrien and Thomas was to, um, to um, study a, a nice property which is called number rigidity. So what is the number rigidity? It's a, it's a fascinating um, a property. So um, imagine, so I have a point process, which it's, it's better on the plane than on the, on the line. So I draw it on the, ply, on the plane. And imagine I, so I, st I, I choose a lambda, okay? And I erase, I, I, uh, I hide what is happening on lambda, but I, I know perfectly the configuration outside. If the process is number rigid, then the number of points inside is a deterministic function of the outside. Okay, so it seems incredible. <laughs> I mean, there's no, no such, I mean, random processes, I mean, how can they be uh, rigid? So, of course, it's completely the opposite with respect to point, Poisson point processes, okay? In Poisson point processes, the inside is completely independent on the outside. So it's completely the, the opposite. But the, the idea is that, you know, is on for in, in the case of DPPs, in the case of uh, search processes, um, well, you have a repulsion between the points that makes the configuration, in fact, much, much more well spread, much more rigid. And the idea is that, okay, they maximize the room, but you, you cannot add a point or withdraw a point without changing completely the, the law. Okay, and there are, so I could uh, make a whole uh, <laughs> uh, talk about, um, about uh, rigidity. There are a number of known results. We have a list of, not so long, but a list of, of um, point processes were known to be rigid. 
And the question is, is sine beta rigid? Excuse me, is there yes. some uh, minimal condition on the kernel? Yes, Buffetov gave some, for, for, for the kernels uh, on R, there are sufficient conditions to, to, for the DPP to be, uh, to be rigid. Yes, I could give you the references. Okay. Um, so, the, say, the, the standard method uh, for, um, to show that a, a, a point process is rigid is to use what we call the Gauche-Perez method. Uh, and it relies on a very, I mean, you have to control the variance of some well-chosen linear statistics of the process. Uh, and if you can, if you can perform this uh, nice control on the, on the linear statistics, then you get that, yeah, that your um, process is number rigid. And this has been used. And uh, while, <laughs> while we were working on the project, uh, Shaibi and Najnoodle were quicker <laughs> and, uh, and show that, uh, that um, in fact, so they use the gauche perez strategy to show that sine beta is rigid. Um, and we used a completely different approach and we showed that uh, any solution of DLR, because here I can say, okay, um, in fact, I, I said DLR equation, but here I can say, okay, let's consider any, um, any point process satisfying this equation. Okay, so we showed that sine beta indeed uh, satisfies this equation, but there could be other solutions. And it's an open problem to, to know if there is only one, if sine beta is the only solution. So what we prove is that any process satisfying this particular DLA equation is number rigid. Uh, and we get a little bit more than Shaibi and Najnudo because Gauche and Perez, uh, it tells you that it's number rigid, but you can ask, okay, it's number rigid, but when I, I know the configuration outside, do I know only the number of points or, or do I know more about the process. And there is a nice, um, a nice example, um, which, is, um, uh, which is the planar Gaussian analytic function, the zeros of the planar Gaussian analytic functions, which was shown to be number rigid, and also barycenter rigid. It means that when you know the configuration outside, you know the number of points and you know the barycenter of the points inside. It's a bit weird, but... Uh, and I think uh, Professor Shai uh, tomorrow will uh, talk about zeros of Gaussian analytic pro processes, no, maybe function, maybe not this uh, particular example, but you'll know more about this. So, um, so here the other equation show that it's not the case, because once you fix the number of points, you have here a density which is positive Everywhere, I mean, on the for for every uh, uh, x i minus x g, I mean, except if it coincides, but uh, it's almost uh, uh, on almost all uh, configurations uh, inside your uh, your lambda. This uh, this is positive, so you know that it's number rigid, but not more. Okay, so it gives you a bit a bit a bit more than just the number rigidity. So we say that it's number rigid and tolerant. Okay, and maybe I'll skip because otherwise uh, I will run out of time. But there are also uh, other results where DLR equations, so with uh, by David de Rudre and uh, Thibaut Vasseur, where other variants of these processes called risk gas were shown to be non-rigid, uh, non-number rigid, uh, also using DLR equation. So in fact, the strategy is to look very carefully on the conditional density and to show, to look at when we move points, it gives you the cost of moving points. In fact, adding a point would be, or, or deleting a point would be moving a point 
from its initial from zero to infinity and uh, in this case the cost of moving a point is infinite wherever in this case the, the cost of moving a point is finite and this gives you rigidity or non-rigidity. Okay, so now let me go to the third application which is uh, dyson brogdon motion. So, um, so very quickly uh, when so I can look at dynamical versions of the models, the random matrix models, uh, CUE, GUE. Okay. So, for example, so the the, the most known, the the, the 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 better known model in this uh, in this framework is Hermitian Brownian motion. So, if you take a you take a matrix, you put real standard Brownian motion on the diagonal. Uh, you 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 um, take um, standard complex brain in motion above, and you make it emission. And Dyson in the 60s showed that the the eigenvalues of this uh, process on emission matrices um, satisfies a system of um, of SDEs of this form. So the eigenvalue lambda k is, so you have a Brownian term, so beta k or independent brain in motion, and the interaction is very singular, is one, is the sum of one over lambda k minus lambda l uh, for all l different from k, and it can be, so it's called Dyson brain in motion, and it's, uh, ca it can be seen as independent brain in motion conditioned not to intersect. Okay, so it's a uh, it has been uh, much studied in the finite case, uh, but and also yeah, it can be so. This is related directly related to this model, but you can play with the system of equation. It won't be necessarily uh, related to a simple process on matrices, but you can still uh, look at the process and add a beta here by analogy or had a, a confining potential also and it's called generalized dyson brownian motion. So uh, let's look at what happens for general beta. Um, okay, so in particular you can do the same. You have this finite particle system you can ask can I make sense of the infinite uh, with an infinite number of particles and there are also in the case one, two and four, so two is very special but one and four are also special, I, 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 I didn't want to insist on, on this but one and four are also related to uh, nice matrix, matrix models uh, but so in the case, in this case um, there are uh, several works of Osada uh, showing that you can make sense of this infinite di Dyson brain in motion. So, in, for example, you can start by restricting to the, the interaction to the particles that are not too far away, and then look at further, uh, look further and further. Okay, and there are also for general beta uh, work of Tsai. Uh, showing that you can make sense and in which sense you can make sense of this uh, infinite, infinite dimensional uh, diffusion. Okay, And uh, a remarkable property is that our process sine beta will be an invariant measure of this dynamics. So it's really deeply related to this sine beta process. And so um, uh, so uh, Suzuki, Koei Suzuki, um, uh, also looked at this uh, this infinite in so this diffusion on uh, locally finite configurations um, from the point of view of say function functional um, uh, inequalities. So uh, I will very roughly summarize his, his work. So the starting point is the 
Bacriemery uh, uh, criterion of a Bacriemery curvature bound. Um, so if you have a Riemannian man manifold and you consider a diffusion, which is just the heat semigroup on your manifold, then you can relate the Ricci curvature of the manifold. So this Ricci curvature is, say, positive or more than some constant k. You can read it, okay, on the evolution of the um, on the properties of the heat kernel. Okay, so if this, um, uh, so you have a bound on the uh, uh, h1 half norm of the semigroup. Um, if uh, you are on a, um, on a manifold of which is positive, say, positive Ricci curvature. And it could develop uh, an analog of the, um, in the case of the, of the uh, Dyson brain in motion. So if you, if you look at uh, the semigroup, uh, so the differential structure involved by this infinite beta Dyson brain in motion, then you can have an analog of the Bakri Emery uh, bound with a K which is positive. Okay, and DLR was a key input. So our results uh, with David, uh, Adrien, and Thomas was a key uh, starting point in, in on this um, on this study because um, so in fact to show this result, he was uh, looking really at this conditional uh, probability. Okay, so he was restricting uh, the dynamics to a finite number of particles inside the ball, applying the alert and looking at the properties of the conditional probability. And he had to show a property which is called geodesical convexity. Okay, so I don't want to go too much into the details, but just mention that there are um, there are uh, links with like more um, geometrical aspects. Um, okay, so just to finish, there are a lot of uh, work still to do. So we would like to better understand the solution. So as I, as I said, we don't even know if there are other processes satisfying the same DLR equation uh, and what kind of computation we could make from there. Maybe, so I mentioned some application, but there are maybe may others and you may, be able, you may have ideas <coughs> in this direction. Uh, and also we are working on uh, showing the alert for uh, other processes. And in particular, I have a work in progress on the Airy beta process, which is another well-known process in random matrix theory together with uh, Gauthier Lambert on the Elliott packet. And the difficulty here is that all the processes I was talking about were stationary and stationarity plays an important role. That's why we start, always start from periodic uh, um, periodic um, processes at the finite level, but it seems to be tractable because Elliot and Gauthier know <laughs> the Harry beta very well, <laughs> so we could get rid of the stationarity. And then thank you for the attention and uh, let's uh, remain kids <laughs> in front of these processes. Nice talk. Are there any questions or comments? Yeah. You mentioned that at some point that um, for uh, when you have a RIS interaction, you don't have number agility anymore, but you still have a version of DLR? Yeah, so um, so uh, this this is the work of yeah, this is the work of David with one of his students, uh, Thibaut Vasseur. So they could so in some range. So here we are not uh, not in dimension one, but in dimension d, and so the risk interaction. So in, in, instead of a log, you put uh, the interaction norm of x to some power s, 
and you can play with s and for some range of parameters where so when s is between d minus 1 and d um, they have a canonical dlr and y they use it to show that it's not rigid how does that compare to the Previous theorem that says that uh, when you have DLR, you have number. It's n it's not when you have this DLR with this logarithmic ah, interaction. Okay. okay. In fact, we have a more general criterion. I mean, if you have here, uh, say j, if uh, you know I, you have a generic interaction j of x1 minus xj, say when j is going to infinity, we know that we have DLR, and when if not, you, are, we are, you have to work, and in, ver in this case, uh, the j is going fast enough to, to zero to show that, in fact, it's not. Yeah, that's uh, this kind of result. Yes. And at, at the beginning, you, when you introduced the sine beta, you, you gave this uh, description of sine beta with the... Um, yeah, this coupled uh, yes, family. Yes, exact. And also you said also that uh, there is a sort of universality, a uh, certain degree of universality with the different potential. So the, the fact that now you have uh, this description of this, the same process, because so can, does it... Um, can does it to what, what is okay? It's the same process because you. Yeah. But do, do you have uh, an insight uh, on, uh, on, on more on the universality, for example, or on uh, how is it connected to this description with the Brownians? Uh, with this? Uh, in fact, so uh, we we really uh, start from very different um, properties. So we are really working on on the Gibbs measure, say, and they are working from the tridiagonal description and in fact so they say okay they just they write the equation for eigenvalues mm -hmm. from the tridiagonal and this gives them naturally a, a, a system of equations and going to the limit in the right way in this uh, in this uh, system of equation gives the coupled system of SDE but uh, it's not, and then universality is more by comparison. I mean, uh, you know, with the V, you just, I mean, there are different techniques like transportation. I mean, but, but it's not. But from DLA, yeah. you, can, you get, uh, can you obtain some universality? Because answering to that question. He, here we are, yeah, here we are on a scale where V has already disappeared. Mm -hmm. So there are no, there are no V inside. Yeah, it has already, uh, we already get rid of, uh, of, of, of V, but, uh, but we started, so you, we want to show this equation of, as the limit, so that's why we, we didn't choose, uh, uh, okay, you, you can choose the, the finite volume process as you want, so you take the more convenient, mm -hmm. and that was C beta E for us. So no, uh, no V, yeah. So it's, it, it's not a tool to show universality. Universality is really something different. Okay, I think uh, it's time to yeah. see. Uh, let's start reading again.